or any number of other things. A, I'm guided by feeling in addition to my thoughts. So that'll, that'll, that'll push me in something like the right direction, dependent upon my relationship with my feelings, which is improving, which is already an anchor in security, which is nice, but also kind of based on that, but also kind of just taking it for granted is this notion that, oh, it'll be right. It's like the podcast. It'll be right. If I fuck up, I fuck up. If I don't, I don't. Chances are, we're going to be all right. What needs to be said will, will, will come. If I just listen, you know, if that space is open. How many times have I entered into a conversation thinking that I was open, but feeling deep down, now nah, I'm a little closed off. I have a premise that I want. I have a, I have an end game for this conversation. I've got a binary that I'm on one side of, that I'm invested in and will not flip over or even entertain the notion of a gray area. Oh yeah, this is the walk spot. It always comes on us, doesn't it? It always comes on us in a surprising way. Look at them bees. Look at these boys just chilling. Oh, I've got a little wasp in there. Seems like they don't like each other that much. Many different kinds. It's an ecosystem right there, boys. Look at them. They're just fucking doing it, man. Anyway. If I see any red wasps, oh, there's one. Oh shit. They flew away. I got too close and they flew away. Can I can I show you guys this one? Hmm. Maybe. You see him? See that guy with the orange wings and the orange antenna? That's fucking sweet. It's so cool. Oh, there's another one. Whew. Out here, man. Yeah, look at you. There he is. You see that shit. You definitely see that. Wow. These black wasps with these rust-colored wings. Crazy, man. We gotta keep moving, though. I don't even like to stop to slow down and walk, but this is just too beautiful an area. Anywho. I, I drew, not comfort, but just a sense of levity or a sense of rightness or a sense of, yeah, aha, uh -huh, a sense of aha uh -huh from that notion. Oh yeah, advocate or, or wash the hands. I'll know the difference. If I don't know the difference, I'll, I'll make a note of it and move on. When something is revealed that is like, oh yeah, maybe I could have done something differently. That's the point of mistakes. You can pivot later. It was like this release from judgment. Holding myself in so much judgment all the time. I don't need to. And when I realize that all this energy gets freed up, it's wonderful. <sighs> Again, as is dependent on my relationship with my feelings and my self as a whole, my holistic condition. Relationships are one of the primary things about being a human being that makes being a human being human. And what is the first relationship? It's the relationship with self, my brother. Oh, damn. Some of these wasps are getting ganked, Jack. You guys don't know. This is my, this is my fucking... This is my 75% Bruce Wayne in the Batcave moment. <laughs> the other day I was standing in a cloud of wasps. None of them stung me. And it was awesome. I was like, yes! Ah! But I was quiet. And I was calm. Kind of like conditions out here. Right now. Look at you. Look at that fucker right there. God damn. Handsome. Handsome. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. 
Why not walk backwards for a moment? Oh yeah, pop the knee. <sighs> so far, not a peep from the bowels. I was really expecting more. So we might run a long time today. I've been hammering and hammering and hammering. And I'm toying with the notion of taking a day off coming up here. It could be today. I don't foresee that, but it could be today. Numbers came in. Numbers really came in. Okay, they haven't... They're in transit right now. They haven't come in yet. But... But they left. See, what happens is... um, When you get paid for these deliveries from these apps, at least the one that I'm on right now, when you do the job and you come home, you can do cash outs that day. You can... There's ways of doing it where you don't have to pay for it. For me, I've not done those ways, so I would have to spend 50 cents to do that. And then also, this, the other thing happens, which is every Monday, you get paid anyway. But what happens is, you have a little a little bar, the, a little tab you can open up on the app that tells you where you're at, what you made that week, and what you made you know since you began working and all that stuff. But specifically, what I'm thinking of is this week. And then, on Monday, that goes to zero for what you currently have. You can look up what you made, but what you currently have in the app is nothing. It goes back to zero. If I, if I have a work day today, then it'll come back. Then there, Well, then there will be more numbers. But the numbers that were there before midnight are gone. They are processing toward my bank. So I don't see them in my bank yet. So they're floating. But the numbers that are floating right now are very nice. There's no reason to think they won't make it to where they're supposed to go. No reason at all. They've been very, they've been very consistent. Probably by midnight tonight or by early morning tomorrow, the numbers will show up and I'll look at my account and be like, okay, hmm, yum. But it's basically how it is in my mind. The feeling is there. The feeling is there. I'm already celebrating how good it feels to have the little bit of extra that I've got right now. That feels good. You know how, you know what I feel like? I feel like, uh, (laughs) damn, I was trying to think of a rep of the of how to cite the reference I was thinking of, but then the actual reference itself kind of dissolved in my mind. See, I'm telling you, (laughs) this is a natural, emergent conversation. Some things want to be spoken, some things don't want to be spoken, some things disappear. I know that I've repeated myself, or or at least half repeated myself, a dozen times just on this podcast. And just restated things that I've already said this particular episode. (sighs) And that's okay. (sighs) Repetition is a part of things. They say get your reps in. Which, yes and no. (sighs) It's like, yeah, but, ooh, get your reps in. But also, you know, bring yourself to the reps, too. Bring bring the game. (sighs) Bring the game. (sighs) That's the best thing about a podcast. There's no judgment here, man. There's no, there's no doing this podcast. I have a clear, I have a clear line to the heart of the podcast because it's mine. It's mine. It makes it impossible for me to do the wrong thing. Unless I fall out of integrity with myself beyond a certain point. And I just, I've watched how easy it is to just stay in the right zone. It's just wherever the pod takes me. My mechanisms are, my internal, my, my deal is so solid at this point that as, as messed up as parts of me are, there is no falling out of integrity on this podcast. At most, I've had to curate three episodes now. We've done fucking 50 of these things almost. Three of them, I'm like, eh, could do without it. <laughs> And even then, those were hard sells. I was like, I, it really doesn't matter. It's, and then I just listened. And the feeling told me, oh yeah, we don't need those. They're good, but... 
but I know what we want to do. Let's do this. And then I pivoted and I did that. And now here we are, 22, 23 episodes later. 25, Jesus. 26, oh my God. More? I was thinking about episodes 18 and 19, which there was an original like 18 and 19. And then I was like, eh, I'm good. Uh, kind of begs the question, should I just leave gaps in the playlist? Or should I replace episodes? Because I made a new 18 and 19. I didn't hide the old 18 and 19. I talked about it when it happened. I was like, ah, I'm good on these. We'll do this instead. I even had a, a theme for one of those podcast episodes where at least for a while I was talking about my process of curation, which I guess here we are repeating it. <laughs> Again, it's just listening, you know? That's all this is. It's just listening in. It's the best thing about a podcast. The best thing about this particular podcast anyway. Everything I do, I judge. But not this. This is just right. <sighs> yeah. If it ever feels like it's not just right, I'll stop doing it. Or I'll change it, you know, either way. Huh. Let us begin running again. Uh, I almost feel like going the other way, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta. <laughs> you gotta try it. You gotta try it for yourself. Make a podcast. Just record yourself being the silly infidel that you are. Like I did. <laughs> Just listen to yourself and flinch. <laughs> or listen to yourself jerk off three times and then realize, oh my god, I've got an ego problem. No! <laughs> I'm the flinching kind. <sighs> But yeah, I broached for a second and then kind of backed away from the quote-unquote third thing that I wanted to talk about. Because you know how it is. You're streaming through life, you do your thing, and occasionally you get hit by this causeless inspiration. You don't know where the hell it came from. I got one of those the other day. And then I sat down and I wrote about it for a while. And it felt good. Some of these things come in cycles or circles or ripples or echoes. I had an echo. Because I'm not a storyteller. Well, I mean, I'm a human, so yeah, of course I am. But I'm not a professional storyteller. Unless you consider this to be professional work. In which case, sure. But maybe I'll just say the thing and not defend myself against myself <laughs> and just talk uh, I've been thinking about writing little snippets of a story uh, recently and uh, uh, we're going to wait for this guy to pass us yeah yeah hip and uh, <laughs> hey puppies and uh I don't know. I don't know. There's different ways of communicating, right? Storytelling is one. I've been thinking about telling a chakra story. For a long time now, actually. I've had many incarnations of it. The first time that I thought about it, I was daydreaming. I forget exactly. Maybe I was hyper-caffeinated. Maybe I was walking. Anyway, I had, uh, I had my, my iPod... And I had my speak, my, uh, I had my headset, or my headphones, I forget. I had a listening device. <laughs> and I was just on a walk, I think. And I was just daydreaming. And I happened to be listening to a music artist called Nine Inch Nails. 
Uh, the artist's... I guess that's the band's name. The artist's name is Trent Reznor. Or that's the name that he gave himself for the band. I don't know. <sighs> Seems like a steampunk name. Seems like a name that you might name yourself if you were going to roleplay a character in a video game. <sighs> Trent Reznor. My name is Blade Laser. <laughs> Anywho, there's a song called Further Down the Spiral. I believe there's an album called Further Down the Spiral as well. There is an album called Down the Spiral. There's another album called Further Down the Spiral. On the album Further Down the Spiral, there's a song Further Down the Spiral. Who fucking knew? Anyway, it's a largely ambient track that starts off in a really dark place. And it gets darker, but in a weird way. It gets darker in a way that's more interesting and fun. There's like a brief monologue. There's a gunshot sound. And then some silence. And then stuff starts to happen. This Alice in Wonderland opening up of a world happens. Right. And it just becomes more and more developed, because one thing that Trent does is he just builds. He builds these tracks out. You start from a relatively simple place, and then you add some stuff, and you add some more stuff. There's progression. A lot of music incorporates the idea of progression. Adding and adding and adding and changing and adding. And then, you know, at some point you take away. You might have a bridge where there's a lot of relief from all the adding. Then you add back. Or whatever. There's different ways of constructing the conversation of song which is just another form of a story, which is just a different form of a conversation like the one we're having. But anyway, I was listening to it and I was walking. And I had this lazy vision of a fella having an Alice in Wonderland experience where things just, maybe you'll understand the next thing I'll say, which is things just kept getting worse. They just kept getting darker. They kept getting scarier. But the music was so beautiful in that song, and it was so pleasant to listen to, even with all the dissonance, and even with all the, the disharmony of tones that you like to hear and tones you don't like to hear. Through all that, the conversation was really pleasant to listen to. I was having a great time. And I thought to myself, man, I want to write a story about this kid that I'm dreaming of. <sighs> yeah. Falling down the spiral. Because I, I have cursory training in yogic modalities. <sighs> I'm a certified yoga instructor. Which... If we're being completely honest, if I took it to India, I think I'd be laughed at. I think, I think people wouldn't take too kindly because I learned a lot of poses and I learned philosophy and I learned history and I learned a lot of names that I can't remember and I learned a few names that I can remember. But uh, there's a rich tradition, a rich series of traditions in India, and all over the world of yoga. But anyway, when I learned about yoga, one of the ahas that I got was of the chakra system. We talked about the chakra system. I think it might have been episode 12, episode 22, episode 14, or 24, one of those. One of the early aughts of the first couple of dozen episodes. We kind of went over the chakras, didn't we? At least my experience of them. Since this is my podcast, welcome again. If you're just tuning in, come along by the fire. We've got hot cocoa and cuddly kitties to pet. <sighs> Unwind. Anywho, I wanted to tell a story about this kid falling down and through his own subconscious. <sighs> A trope as old as time, but a good one. 
And I had it organized in such a way where he was falling first through his root chakra, which explored these themes, then to the water chakra, which explored those themes, and on and on until he came to some kind of a personal insight or a resolution. At the, at the end. And I had a lot of fun playing with ideas. What is a person having a vision of interaction within a chakra? What is, what is that vision like? What's the earth chakra like? Well, it would look differently depending on who you were. If you're listening to this, you probably already heard me talk about Dan Millman and his chakra journey in the book. Sacred Journey of the Peaceful Warrior. Whew, took a second. The Chakra Journey. Ang the Last Airbender from the series. Avatar the Last Airbender. That show and that character had one dedicated episode to climbing the chakras, resolving issues, and moving on. I thought, what audacity. What audacity to plug the chakra modalities into one 20 minute episode of a cartoon. Later, I dropped the judgment and was like, ah, yeah, but, but it felt good. It's not any one thing that did right or wrong. The thing felt really good in the experience. So I highly recommend watching that episode. I believe it's the season conclusion to season two, which might've been a two-parter actually. I can't remember. But check it out. Aang goes through his journey. Whew. And has his experience, and his visions are different. And, as it happens, because it's a cartoon and it was one episode, or two, it was very brief. You could blame that on the fact that he's the Avatar, so he's like, I'm the spiritual link between the physical, the spiritual, the people, and the... And the and the timeless transcendental. So, okay, maybe. Maybe his chakras come loose really easy. Because he's just always dipping into that. Into that practice. And he's a monk, so. Who knows? He, that might, you know. Might be helping him. Who knows? But, uh. I was thinking about this kid. And his chakra journey. And I thought, man. Oh, this looks cool. That looks cool. I had themes. I had settings. I had thoughts. I wrote them down. And then I like shelved it for like a year or two. Then I came back around and I looked at it again. I don't have any of those old papers. But I know that I've been through this many times. In a position where I was like inspired to write a scene or a sequence or a story from this from this idea a kid falling through the chakras and having some kind of a revelation I had a name for him eventually his name was going to be Peck Peck because it's an unpleasant word to say Peck Ugh. and he was an unpleasant kid I had him out to be uh, an orphan of some kind, making rounds through the adoption system of the United States, one place to the next. Um, he had been in a fire, so he was all burned up. And he was a horny little fucker coming up. I had all these ideas for him. And then, you know, shelved him. And because it's me, you know I had to throw zombies in there. <laughs> I was thinking like, oh man, chakra one. Yeah, deserts. Or yeah, cold, dead, earth plane of the inner subconscious. Where it's just him and one zombie. One zombie's coming after him. And he's got to kill it. <laughs> And in so doing, he unlocks the gate to the second, and he receives some kind of armor, some kind of 
some kind of an insight or unlocks a superpower. And then I shelved all that because it felt really good. And I was like, it doesn't have to go anywhere. It doesn't have to do anything. It just felt great to write about this kid, Peck. By the way, Peck was a stylized version of a guy we already talked about on the podcast, Wilm from the Seventh Saga. In the video game episode that we did a couple of episodes ago that I did not take down, ha ha. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm a guy who runs, drinks coffee, talks a lot of shit, plays video games, is bad at martial arts, and is becoming good at being himself and also running. <laughs> anyway, so Peck was styled after Wilm. He was a very fiery guy. He was going to have fiery superpowers and he was going to be a good time to write about. <sighs> And I did. I toyed around with him as a D and D character for a little while, set up like some campaign ideas. Decided that wasn't the way to tell the story. Came back to it like a year later. Thought about hybridizing it a bit. I thought about making his character and his story a part of a game show of some kind, a talk show, game show, scripted. So really a parody. I had all these ideas about what I wanted to do with Peck. I had a whole cast of friends for him too. And they all had named or based on the thing that was eating them. He was in love with a chick. The chick was uh, basically like his, his Princess Peach character. The unavailable girl that she's always getting abducted by somebody or... She's always at the, at the whim and the whale of her own baggage and is constantly getting swept away by the tides of fortune. The subject of his relentless pursuit. Her name was Perry. I gave her a name. Her name was Perry. Short for paraphernalia. I had a whole backstory worked out for her and all sorts of things. There's another girl, Annie. Her name was short for anesthesia, and she was an opiate addict. I thought that was cute. And she was, uh, well, in the D&D campaign, Annie was a bit of a, a, a tanky, shieldy kind of a character. She was always defending and helping others, but had a self-mutilation problem and an arc to get through, and there were these twins. There were these other, there's like these assassin twins. Balea and Ghana were their names. And they were exotic. They were thin little slips of women. But they were gonna stab you up. And they, they were gonna be glass cannons who acted like zombie insurgents just puncturing holes in zombie ranks. I thought that was kinda cool. Anywho, Pank and Co. Peck and Co. <laughs> Had their, had their whole, their whole thing. <laughs> you want one more? I, I got him. There was also going to be a character called Lucky the Wonder Knight, <laughs> who had a. Uh, <laughs> he was a one-trick pony. He wore this bright, uh, pearlescent armor, and he had this. Uh, he was like really tall and super buff, and a total ass. And his arc was basically Steve Harrington from Stranger Things. He spends most of the story getting his ass handed to him. Because in his world, he's the king, he's the man. But in the bigger world that Peck is trying to save and all these other people, through the chakra journey, back to the real world, whatever. Lucky just gets iced constantly. He's always out of his league. He's got one trick and one trick only. He shoots a big energy beam and has a big sword and a big shield and big armor. Everything's big. <sighs> Lucky the Wonder Knight. <laughs> Getting schooled. Schooled by the zombie hordes. <sighs> so those that's all you're getting. I had at least two more that I could get into, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Peck and Co. And then like a year later, I had another thought about, oh, wait a second. 
that's not satisfying. One of the best things about Alice in Wonderland is that Alice in Wonderland at least kind of does what Puddles did. Alice in Wonderland, if you watch the cartoon, and especially if you read the book, at least the sense that I get is that there's a lack of conclusion. There's a lack of satisfying conclusion. You know, in the cartoon, she just kind of wakes up and is back to business. She's been through like this thing. We talked about the live action movie, Alice in Wonderland, that was before the most recent batch of live action movies. There have been many, look it up. Where Alice is talking to all these characters like Gene Wilder and fucking all these people. Anywho, it's uh, in those media, it was kind of unsatisfying how things ended up. That's a trope of the horror genre, by the way. Characters don't get satisfying arcs. They don't learn anything. Things just kind of get cut off in the middle. Or everything ends badly and everybody dies. Even that's kind of... At least it's a conclusion. Alice doesn't even give you that. Anyway. I was like, that's more satisfying to me than if I would have given Peck the journey through the chakras emerge as a point of consciousness. Resolving itself in the experience of having at the end of the journey. And then just... And then I didn't know where to take that. Like, oh, what did you do then? He just lives a quietly resplendent, loving, and joyful life. That's cool, but no. <laughs> and, then I, and then I experimented with giving him a bad ending. And I also experimented with various levels of how graphic do I want to get on this journey? How extensive do I want to treat the zombies? What different kinds are there? Who is Peck? Is he an anti-hero? Is he a bad guy? I always had a really hard time writing bad guys. Whew. I don't think I would have that kind of a hard time anymore. Having a better relationship as I do with the bad guys in me. I've been on and on about it with myself. That relationship with the bad guys. Whew. Which we can get into if you want. I don't know how much time we have. But I guess we want to complete one thought before starting the next, right? As if that's even possible. <laughs> As if that's even really possible. In emergent, organic, creative, unlimited type of conversation. I'm the ref. I make the calls and I'm not going to start that conversation. I've got it in my brain. We'll talk about it if we want to later. <sighs> because I want to talk about...